All right, how's it going? Hope you guys are doing good. So today I wanna to talk about gaming keyboards, specifically gaming marketing terms, because it seems like everywhere you go, this keyboard is gonna make you faster, it's gonna make you more accurate, and of course you're gonna play way better on company A's keyboard than company B's keyboard. But the truth is, most gaming marketing terms are just BS. Like, they're not gonna make you a better gamer, same reason why when you give someone a baseball bat, they're not gonna become Barry Bonds out there. So for the most part, these are just companies that wanna sell you their latest and greatest product that does whatever this year. Or maybe their new $300 mouse in some cases. You already know how it works. So it's kinda hard to get excited when someone announces a new premium keyboard. So rewind 10 years ago, what was considered a good gaming keyboard? If it had mechanical switches, it'd be pretty good. But in 2023, what's a good keyboard? It doesn't really feel like anyone's pushed the limit that much. So very rarely does something come out that brings actual real innovation to a certain tech category. So ask yourself a question. Is there any room for the keyboard to improve and reach the apex? I initially came into this with a bit of speculation. Meanwhile, I've been testing this keyboard for a while now and honestly wanted to answer the question, if the keyboard could improve, would that realistically have any effect on my experience in game or using a computer? Then this thing came along and it's got me thinking, there's not quite anything out there like this right now. So this is the Wooting 60HE and right off the bat, the spec list is pretty different to what you normally see. It has the ability to bind four different functions per key press. It uses analog Hall effects sensors, features customizable actuation points, one millisecond input latency, dynamic key actuation and joystick emulation. It's probably also the first time I can say that this keyboard might actually make you better in game while also being a really good productivity keyboard. So what's up with this? Wooting as a company is relatively small compared to the other giants in the space. So they won't have the same colossal marketing budgets and honestly very well could fly under the radar for the average consumer because it feels like we're more at a plateau for keyboards. Like major brands have been playing it pretty safe and there hasn't been many huge leaps or bounds forward. Mice have been getting lighter, but keyboards not much stuff going on. Now, the moment I took this out of the box, it's difficult to fully appreciate it immediately because it just looks like a pretty normal 60% keyboard, like just holding in the hands, looking at it doesn't tell the whole story. And the technology is super cool. It's actually kind of old. Wooting is using Lecker switches that have Hall effect sensors instead of optical or mechanical switches. And I want you to think of the traditional mechanical switch like a light switch. You can flip it on or off, but Hall effect sensors behave more like a dimmer switch with that full range of customizability. Now you may be asking, Okay, Alex, why does this matter? Well, it actually allows you to change the actuation point within the switch itself, which isn't the whole story of how you can make this pretty overpowered in games where precise inputs are required because it literally eliminates dead zones. Normally, when you activate a traditional switch, there's a set actuation point where a mechanical leaf makes contact to complete a circuit, registering an input. Or sometimes it's a beam of light in optical switches that gets interrupted. But in the Wooting, each key stem houses an actual magnet, and under that magnet sits a sensor that measures changes in the magnetic field. So it can read how close and how far the magnet you're pushing is relative to the sensor, which basically gives you an analog type input that you'd normally see on an Xbox or PlayStation controller. When I was first messing around with it, I thought, I feel like we've seen something like this before. And then I remembered SteelSeries and Razer now believe make keyboards with analog switches, but the real secret weapon here is hidden in the Wooting software. First of all, the software configuration is web-based, which really feels so much better, like miles ahead of all these auto download solution. I mean, when has someone really ever been excited to install and deal with Razer Synapse? Like if you look at their utility page, it really feels nice and intuitive and not overcomplicated. This is also where you can find the performance settings. So if you're into competitive shooters or rhythm type games, and you have to take into consideration that sometimes your movement can oftentimes be more important than just your aim. Like having solid, unpredictable movement, how could that not make you play better in games? FY, even if you aren't into those types of games, this keyboard still has a ton of really useful features you can take advantage of from a productivity standpoint. Maybe not the 60% version, but We'll get to that. So normally you would be limited by how fast a switch could activate and deactivate by its actuation point. The Wooting has a feature that I've only ever seen on this keyboard and they're calling it rapid trigger. And once you try it, you understand why it's so valuable to have. And it comes down to one summarized word and that's speed. So rapid trigger allows you to press down a key and right when you release it, its actuation point is reset and you can hit the switch immediately. 
but what this translates to is insanely responsive movement inputs. And you feel like you can move much more precisely and have more control at speed for when you're peeking corners or trying to dodge to avoid damage. So that within itself, when you combine it with a 0.1 millimeter actuation point, becomes legit. You can set each key up to four millimeters if you'd like different levels per key so you don't accidentally reload in the middle of a gunfight. They also included a tachyon mode, which sheds down even more input latency, increasing the polling rate to a thousand hertz, I believe. So for the most part, you can rest assured it's not the keyboard that's holding you back. Now, my thoughts on this initially was, okay, is it that big of a deal? I think if you're the casual gamer that doesn't play competitive FPS games, it's probably not gonna be like earth shattering. If you're into the whole, competitive space, I feel like you could legitimately get an advantage over people that use standard keyboards if you can put these features to use. I'm not saying it's gonna make you an insane player, but realistically, I've never felt more in sync with aiming and moving in games than I do with this. The thing that I noticed the most was going back to my old mechanical keyboard and trying to do the same movements. It's just not the same. So the 60HE also happens to use a simple but brilliant way to use dynamic macros based on different actuation points of the keystroke. That means maybe you're into RTS or MMO games where you can bind multiple abilities to the same key, just one short press and one long press. The same goes for actual productivity cases with DKS mode. So you can map up to four different parts of each key. So you can have a certain tool for a short press and another for a long press, which is what I ended up doing. And then of course there's analog gamepad emulation. And this lets you set a gradual movement on a key press similar to a controller joystick, which you can sort of achieve the equivalent of an analog stick. And I'll tell you, it's still kind of jank because you're just tricking the game into thinking you're using an Xbox controller, but it works really good for like racing games when you're driving around and you need that full pedal articulation or that steering wheel articulation, because you press the D key on a normal keyboard and you're just slamming it to the right. It's not like a joystick where you can slowly push it to the right. So it still needs more developer support for the feature to be fully fledged out. And I can't speak for the long-term durability of the keyboard just yet, but I can tell you that based on the design of the Switch, there are no actual contact points. So on paper, these types of switches have crazy long lifespans. And even the PCB itself seems really well made. It's a multi-layer stack with a ton of vias. So I'd imagine components are really well isolated from any interference. So yeah, if you had the option, I think most people would prefer a keyboard that has all these capabilities over most of the other gaming keyboards on the market. So it's also priced at 175 bucks, which is pretty competitive to other keyboards in the price range. I mean, you can get a keyboard for $10, but its features pretty much smoke anything I've tried. Wooting is doing pretty cool things to differentiate themselves and cheering for smaller companies and unique products is awesome. They actually even encourage you to mod it, from, even though it's one of the best sounding boards I've ever used from the factory. So they've taken a downright open source approach to developing this and products like this aren't something you see every day. I think eventually other companies are going to have to adopt these features. There's just no way I would think Wooting is going to get away with being the only one on the market to have this tech in their boards for the future. So this thing's legit. I've loved using it and I really can't imagine going to anything else after using it. So that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Comment down below if you're into that. So thanks.